Hi students and welcome to this video on voluntary and involuntary nerve pathways. Our walk for today is that you'll be able to understand voluntary and involuntary pathways. You'll be able to describe the nerve pathways for both and talk, be able to talk about how reflexes occur. And this is important because understanding these pathways helps us to understand homeostasis. Let's have a look at our voluntary pathways first. So when we're talking voluntary, we're talking about our somatic nervous system. So you recall that somatic is um, the part that we can control. So for example, if we stand up, sit down, have a drink, all those things are voluntary. So that's controlled by our somatic nervous system. So the four steps are, um, we detect a stimuli and that's detected by sensory receptors. All right, so our sensory receptors, that could be touch, taste, sight, all those um, different types of sensory receptors. Uh, the sense, then those sensory receptors send a message to our brain and this happens along nerves that are sensory nerves that carry the message to our spinal cord and brain. The third step is the brain processes the information and decides how it's going to respond. And then the fourth step is the brain sends a message back um, to the muscle or whatever it wants to move via a motor nerve, a motor neuron carries that response back. So let's have a look at it, this pathway um, in a scenario below. All right, so we see an apple, okay? The, vision, the um, picture of the apple is detected by the receptors, the sensory receptors in our eye. The sensory um, neuron, so this is step two, then carries the message to our brain, so it comes back to this part of the brain, the visual cortex in this um, instance, because this is the part that um, uncodes all the information that the eyes send it. And then the third step is the brain processes the information. So the brain sees an apple and feels hungry. So it decides to pick up the apple. All right. So it's so this part of the brain up here, our motor cortex, is the part of the brain that's um, important for controlling our muscles and our movements. So this part of the brain then sends a message down to the muscles that move our arm and our hand. All right. And this nerve that carries the message is a motor neuron, okay, or a motor nerve. All right, so we've got first a sensory sensory um, nerve to carry the response, the message to the brain, and then a response which is along a motor nerve to our muscles. Let's have a look at our involuntary pathways. So we're thinking about our autonomic nervous system here. Again, there's four steps. The process is actually almost identical, apart from. Um, a few little things that are different. So the first step, stimuli is detected by our sensory receptors. Then number two, the sensory neuron sends a message to the brain. In this case, the hypothalamus, remember that organ that we, that we learnt about a couple of lessons ago um, in our brain up here, a hypothalamus processes the information and determines the response. Remember a hypothalamus is a gland and it's part of the nervous system. So it can send out hormones and it can send out electrical impulses. So our hypothalamus is really important. So it's getting information from lots of different places. Um, it can get information that our eyes see, our, our taste, our touch, all those sort of sensory inputs. And if it senses any danger, if we sense stress, all right, the sympathetic nervous system kicks in, remember, and our heart rate goes up. And the way that happens is the hypothalamus sends a message down through two different neurons. All right, so we're up to step four. Um, and it's going to increase our heart rate. So it goes down. If we look at this purple nerve here, the sympathetic nervous system, the message gets carried down this nerve here, and that increases the, our heart rate and the amount um, of pressure when it contracts, all right, to really pump that blood around our body, to get away from that snake or the spider or whatever we've seen that's given us a big, um, big fright. All right, so now remember that our autonomic nervous system, 
um, is divided into two parts. So we've talked about the sympathetic part, which happens when we get stressed, right? The nerves go from our hypothalamus um, down this nerve pathway to increase our heart rate. But remember, the other pathway is our parasympathetic pathway. Um, and remember, that's the pathway that happens most of the time when we're resting and digesting. All right. So in this case, if we're just chilling, the um, hypothalamus is sending nerves down two, two, two neurons or two nerves again, down this nerve, the parasympathetic nerve, and it's sending a message to our heart to just pump normally. All right, at a normal normal rate. Um, and so I guess the important differences between the pathways that are voluntary is that the involuntary pathways has, has two neurons, okay, and the muscles or the, that are, the message is sent to are involuntary. Okay, so we can't control our heart pumping, but we can control the muscles that control our hand to pick up that apple in the last example. Um, also, You'll notice in the information that in the um, Education Perfect, it talks about different neurotransmitters in the nerves. And that's interesting to know, but I don't expect you to remember that in, in a lot of detail. Now, we get to something interesting here, and that is reflexes. All right, so why is it that if you burn yourself, so like in this example here, you move your hand away as a reflex before you even realise, before your brain even realises it's hot. How does that happen? Another example of a reflex is when we sneeze or cough. The response happens before we even have time to think about it. And what's, what actually happens is something pretty cool. Um, the four steps are similar to what happened in the, in the last um, couple of slides. So first of all, we get a stimulus that's detected. All right, so here, the stimulus is detected by our pain receptors in our fingertips that realise that we're getting burnt. Right? The sensory receptors send a response up the sensory nerve. This is the blue one that I'm tracing here. And that travels all the way up to the spine. Okay, So this picture up here is a picture of the spine that's been cut in half. So we call that a cross section. All right, So the message hasn't gone all the way up to the brain. It's down about here somewhere in... Um, about where our base of our neck is, all right? So the nerves travelled up our arm and it's just in the spine here. Now, there's an actually, there's a little link between the two between the two nerves, between the sensory nerve and the motor nerve, and that's called an interneuron. Okay? This interneuron is really cool because it is a connection that can send a signal directly to the motor neuron. Okay? So there's a little motor neuron between the sensory nerve, which is the blue one, and the motor nerve, which is the red one, just here. So the message then travels down the motor nerve to our muscle, contracts it, and moves our hand away from the flame. Now this little loop that travels up our arm in the spine and back down again, that is a lot quicker than sending all the nerve up to our brain, processing it, and sending the message back. So this little interneuron is what makes the reflex so quick because the message doesn't have to go to the brain. So students, how did you go in your learning today? Can you recall the four steps that happen in voluntary and involuntary pathways? And can you explain how a reflex occurs? If you can do these things, then you are doing a fantastic job. If, you, if not and you need any help, please make sure you email your teachers. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great week, guys. See you later.